Katie and I'm a pilot and I'm here today to talk to you about how I went from zero to airline transport pilot for under $35,000 and the exact breakdown of all the cost of my ratings. So let's get into it. First of all, I started training in 2016. So this may be a little bit different than the current prices of today, but still pretty similar and you can do the same route that I did. I got my private pilot's license for about $12,000. This is pretty common. I still think nowadays you can get a private for about 15 grand. And then I went on and did light sport CFI. So nobody seems to understand this or know this is an option. It is a little bit more rare because there's not as many pilots that are training to be sport pilots instead of private pilots in the U S but it is still a really awesome possibility that you could take advantage of. So a light sport CFI just has to have 150 hours total time. So after my private pilot's license, I found a flight school in Florida that was interested in hiring me to be a light sport CFI. They were going to help me get to my 150 hours by me exchanging labor for flight time instead of paying them a cost. So I still paid for the flight time. I was not compensated to fly at that point, but I was able to do it much more inexpensively. So I got through that with basically just paying for my private pilot's license and then paying for my light sport CFI check ride and my written tests. Overall, throughout all my flight training, I spent about $1,500 on written tests. I've taken a lot of them throughout this whole process. So about $1,500 on just the written tests alone. But at this point, I've spent about 12 grand on my private pilot's license. I've spent about another 500 on my check ride for my light sport CFI. And then I started working as an instructor. A lot of people, did not know and still don't know that you do not have to have a commercial license to work as a light sport CFI and be paid. You don't have to have an instrument rating either, but this is the one that really confuses people because they think that this is not following um, the laws of commercial pilots licenses in the U S however, the FAA considers compensation for flight training compensation for teaching and not for piloting. So you actually don't even have to have, like for example, a second class medical to be a CFI A. For a light sport CFI, you don't have to have a commercial license. So started working as a light sport CFI. I was time building at this point and I was getting paid. Also the school I was working at gave me the employee rate on their airplanes, which was around $40 an hour for airplanes. So I had access to flight time at a much, much lower rate when I wasn't straight up being paid to build my flight time. So after that, I went ahead and I got my instrument rating. Um, you only have to have 15 hours with an authorized instructor to get your instrument rating. An authorized instructor is going to be a CF I. So I could not do this with a light sport CFI, could not do this with a CFI A. I had to go pay a CF I to do my instrument rating. Now I was working all the time, so I was really proficient in flying. And because I was so proficient, I was really able to do it in 15 hours. Like that was not that crazy to me to get that done. So I did my minimum of 15 hours and I spent about $3,500 total on my instrument rating. So that still is 12 grand for the PPL, about $500 for the check ride for the light sport CFI. $3,500 for the instrument rating. And then I spent about $1,800 on my commercial license and $1,800 on my CFI A. So that's what most people think of when they hear CFI as they think of CFI airplane, not light sport CFI or CFI instrument or any of those other things. So at this point I had spent about $19,600. So let's just call it 20 grand. And I had my instrument rating, my commercial and my full CFI. At this point I was able to get a job working as a civilian contractor for the air force, teaching for initial flight training. And I was making $91,000 a year from then on. So I continued my flight training, but at this point I was like, I don't really need my instrument um, instructor or my MEI or anything like that. So I just worked for a little bit and then I went back and I got my CF I that cost me about $2,800. Again, when you're really proficient, you don't need a ton of time. You kind of just need to get checked out in the airplane go do some approaches and do some check ride prep. And that's what I did. Check rides at this time were about five or $600. So I know they're a little bit more expensive now. I think here in Idaho, they're between like five and $800 now or 500 and a thousand. So a little bit more expensive depending on the rating that you're going for. Next, I did my multi-commercial and this one, I really didn't have a hack for, I just kind of paid for it. Now 
I was able to find a Piper Apache for $2,700 wet with an instructor. So great rate as well. Um, this was in 2020 that I got my commercial multi-engine add-on and I did that for about $5,400. I also chose to kind of time build a little bit because I didn't have any multi-engine time at this point. So I did a little bit more than like the 10-ish hours that sometimes people will do. Again, no hours requirement for multi-commercial, it's just proficiency. I decided to also get my MEI at that time. So I just added on another check ride. So I spent about $1,600 on those two check rides, but I had the same flight training for both of those two ratings, multi-commercial and MEI. After this, I was hired by a company that paid for my ATPs, which is pretty standard. So a lot of pilots don't actually pay for their own ATP, right? Um, and that's it. Most of the time, the paying for flight training goes up until like your multi-commercial. So that grand total for me took me up to, so that grand total through ATP single and multi-engine took me up to about $35,000 total spent. And again, the way that I did this is through Lightsport CFI. I wrote an ebook on this because really nobody seemed to know that this was a possibility. So I put together something that covers all the FARs on this, how it can be applied, because I think it's a really good possibility that could save you a ton of money. This is what I did and how I got through zero to ATP for under $35,000. I've also included in the cost of this a little bit of um, buffer because sometimes you need books or other things like that. And I don't have the exact receipts for what I spent. I just know the hours that it took me to get there and the price that they were at the time. So there you have it. There's the breakdown of how I went from zero to ATP for under $35,000. I hope this helps you out.